Happy New Month, everyone. It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Moriah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies. Hello. Good, Good morning. morning. Yes, sir. Welcome to April. April. My stepmother's birthday, actually. My I mom's birth month. I always remember okay. April 1st. April 1st. Because, uh, <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah, top way. I am. Um, I like the orange. Yeah, oh, let's just brighten up right everything color. a bit, you know. So, a bit worried because we're all focusing on... Um, COVID-19 COVID and there's a battle going on with oil prices. Oil prices dropped below $20. Mm. Wow. 20 is 18 as at yesterday. Oh, wow. $18 yesterday and this is, we're producing about 2.3 million barrels per day. People fighting are producing 10 million barrels per day. 10 million, like Iran is producing three, Saudi Arabia is producing, everybody's producing oil. Our main source of income in Nigeria okay. still now is still oil. So we have a crisis looming. Mm. The devaluation of Naira is probably going to go down. So as we're focusing attention on trying to pro pro protect ourselves against COVID, can we have our, our economic team doing work, work over time? Mm. You see, my, my, own worry, my own looming. worry is even after 14 days. Yes, what well, that, that's on the so health side. Are we going to, no, as well as the health side, are we going to open our borders? Are we going to, because we're trying to kickstart the economy. Are we going to start selling? I mean, what exactly well, is the game realistic. plan? All the other countries are giving themselves the next three months. Mm. So we are saying we're doing 14 days. No, 14 so, days, I don't, I don't think it's just it's after 14 enough. days that we're mm. going to open all of our borders. Yeah. It's just for us to see what we can, you know, achieve, achieve with this 14 days, see how many people we can capture, because a lot of people have not been tested already. Yeah, so with this lockdown, is, they yeah. may be able to do something. Mm. I hope. Oh, how are you doing, Jay? You did not give us good news today. Now, what's your problem? Any good news? Eh, good, good news. news. Oh, good Please news. Supply the good news. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I what's up? I don't know. I'm just. Uh, there was no traffic on feeling, the road. Yes, there was no. Aside from that. Aside Looking from all amotekum. Uh, <laughs> 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 very true. I'm just yeah. feeling that um, we should give ourselves hope. Mm. We should um, not take this like it's just happening because the world is coming to an end. There are a lot of conspiracy theories. My ear was full this weekend from rapture coming, from go to the book of revelations, from this is, you know, uh, 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 antichrist coming and all of that. I don't think we need all of that. I think we need to see this as an opportunity for us to see ourselves as one. People are beginning to, you know, reach out to their I'm neighbors, really reach out to other countries. You know, we're, 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 we're seeing ourselves as this is a problem for everybody. We should just, you know, just rest a lot of money that, is yeah, it, this is for us right now to know that we are all one and what affects one person affects the other person. Let's not take it like the world is equal ending. opportunity. The sickness. world cannot end. Like, I'm um, not blown. I, 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 hear, I hear you. This is an equal opportunity sickness. Yeah. That was what he said for yesterday. Everybody, it's yeah. for everybody. Yeah, so but, just in, but at the same time, just in case rapture does come, uh, just clean up your house. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I've told you my own. If you like, say this is not rapture. I love it. If it comes, I will, be, no, it's no, not in the Bible. No, no, but, 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 but I'm not saying, I, I agree listen, with you. I'm not saying this I'm, is I'm, it. That is it. This is yeah, it. Yeah, I'm okay. saying, but let us, signs let, of us, the end. let us be aware the because signs of the end we have, have the beginning since I was have, born till now. We, things will always happen. We have been warned. Things will always happen. Okay. Calamities will always no happen. No problem. Neither you or me were there when when those other ones happened. It's possible. We met this one. My point is that. Let us know what the Bible says, yeah. and let's know what the signs are. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that this is what's going to be Because yeah. I, I read a joke. <laughs> like somebody do a mistake, blow trumpet somewhere, and everybody goes scatter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here, I'm Because right here. people are saying, okay. I'm right here, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, area, I agree with you, everybody let's calm down. More, but yeah. Christians must watch and pray. Yeah. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the news. But stay with us, we'll be right back. Right, we're going to start with the nation. Federal government, Lagos, plan 1,700 daily test capacity. Picture of the COVID-19 index case of the Kitty being discharged. Uh, I think that was Commissioner for Health, Dr. Mujisola, escorting him to the bus. Lagos, Abuja, roads deserted as lockdown begins. <coughs> Nigerian doctor dies in the UK. Palliatives coming for 11 million Nigerians. Buhari's action backed by law, says Oshimbaju. We haven't heard much about our vice president recently. I mean, I mean, it's been quite quiet with this yeah. COVID-19. But either way, uh, which out. stories are we taking in the nation? Let's talk about the palliatives. Palliatives, yes. So uh, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Hajia Fadika Saruk, 
has said that uh, 11 million Nigerians will benefit from the federal government palliatives. Uh, they said they've already started with the IDP. Yeah. And they are, they've given them two months relief materials. He's also, he's also saying that the government has a social register that captures all of the persons that are considered vulnerable. So they have about 2.6 million households that they have reached. They are still looking out to reaching more. They are also reaching out to the urban poor. That's those who stay in the city but cannot take care of themselves. Mm. I'm just hoping because before this COVID-19, a few months back, we heard news that the IDPs are not really getting the relief materials that are sent to them. There's always a kind of a hanky-panky that's been played there. So I just hope that those relief materials they've sent to them that will cover for two months, they will actually get it and that the urban poor as well will be remembered. Yeah. All right. So the other story about the 68-year-old doctor, Alpha Saidu, is a medical doctor in the United Kingdom. He died of the coronavirus. That's the second we're hearing from uh, international soil. Uh, there was the other gentleman, Bassi Ofyong, a student at the Western Michigan University in the U.S. who died also on Saturday mm. of the COVID-19 in the U.S. Moving on now to The Punch. FG plans 1,500 tests daily or your Edo decry kits shortage. Zamfara cleric chains 56 persons at illegal center and arrested. Travelers lament as Lagos Abuja lockdown begins. Kudlums killed two burgle shops in Oyo. We are suspending business in Lagos and Abuja, say sex workers. Yeah, Oshun well. names ex-governors Adeboye Oni Alakija food panel members. ICPC warns against diversions as COVID-19 donations ex exceed 25 billion naira. Next, suspends electricity tariff increase, which is great. Army redeploys anti-Boko Haram war commander 12 generals in shakeup. Okay, so I'm happy about the um, NERC suspend because today was on April 1st and we talked about it yesterday mm -hmm. because we, we were expecting that tariff increase. They had announced it in December 2019 yes, that part of the adjustment they made since 2015 yeah. was that they were going to implement increase in tariffs. Tariff. I didn't see power for more than, t for um, above two hours yesterday hmm. throughout the day. Same here. Yes, okay. I didn't yeah, have there power was a, for more there than was two hours. Yeah, there was an issue we heard though, so. the gas supply. We, we read that in the papers yesterday. Mm. But I've been having a bit of... A, a bit of I want to talk steam. about the ICPC story because yes. the ICPC spokesperson has shouted out, she was screaming out that um, we've seen cases where people take monies meant for IDPs and embezzle it and you, with corruption steal from IDPs that if, with the considerate, um, considerable money being donated, 25 billion right mm. now, over 25 billion have been donated to the federal government by private sectors to help COVID-19, let us social distance ourselves from corruption in this season. Amen. That was our word. Amen. So, and that their eyes are on that fund. They would monitor how it's being spent. And so anybody that gets contract or whatever it is should not mm. be corrupt, should not be play corruption, whatever it is. Yeah. We've actually not even the funds. time for it. This is not the time. This is not the time, time for it. Because not. people are hearing I mean, money flying up. up and yes, yeah, a whole lot of money. how these monies are being spent. Okay, major let us story. speak another, yeah, major headline. Go ahead. Yes, so the Director General of the NCDC has said that uh, the federal government will start Start testing 1,500 uh, people for COVID-19 from this coming week, mm -hmm. saying that they are already testing 500 people daily already. And some states are complaining they are facing a shortage of testing kits, mm -hmm. like Oyo and Edo State. Now, they are saying that um, they are only testing those who have case definition linked to COVID-19. So number one, you have to uh, have a respiratory symptoms. You have to have a contact with a travel person or you must have traveled yourself before you are tested. Mm. So people shouldn't just be rushing so for is any saying, little thing to be tested. NMA is saying that they are not testing, they're not testing people that have symptoms already right. yes. because they don't have testing kits. So if someone is rushed to a hospital and the person is exper experiencing um, difficulty in breathing, respiratory issues, mm. the person won't get tested unless they get to Yaba and all of that. So it's it's we, we let's see the 1500 something else yeah I let's see in that a related one. story we only have about uh, i think it's 119 uh ventilators in the related yes. story across the country uh the, the commissioner for health and Lagos state is saying that we don't we don't have any patient that needs ventilators just yet that's mm. the, um, the machine that actually helps breathing, yeah, breathing. breathing yeah. so we don't with, with all the cases we have haven't gone to that point but hopefully we do have some ventilators uh within okay. that we can use if that if that need arises
Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to take the sex workers, but let's move on. Okay. And it's just that they said they're not working Work, now. No, they yeah, are yeah, essential yeah. services. Yeah. No, they are, are they I'm, essential? I'm surprised, there's, I'm surprised there's an association of sexual workers. No, no, yes. They, they, they yes. protested a few. When, they were, when um, one of their mem some of their members were arrested by police officers last yes. year, they, they protested that this is, we are an association, and they spoke yeah, up. Right. So right now, what are they saying, Murayo? Tell us. No, I think that they're suspended, but why are they saying? No, they now. This is not the time somebody will be going to Everybody should stay with their wife. <laughs> At home. In fact, we need to just that just to <laughs> I'm telling you. Ah, how are housewives managing this season? Yes, I'm because now <laughs> they are, it's, it's different. Different strokes are different folks. Some people are complaining that they are having to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, no, I'm not complaining. That, that's my forte. I'm not complaining. Okay, so we'll, we'll discuss we'll, it tomorrow. We'll tomorrow. Don't worry. All the married women, please call in tomorrow since this is our time. Yes, sir. Yeah, sitting here. Let's move on to daily trust. Okay. COVID-19, only 169 ventilators in 66, we mentioned that. How Bwari's coronavirus campaign compares with the UK? I don't know um, Kiari's whereabouts in Lagos, says Health Commission, and that's in Daily Trust. The FG to test 1,500 for coronavirus daily. COVID-19, next suspense electricity tariff like, um, hike until June 30th. Okay, so I think we've mentioned pretty much yes. all the stories. Oh, Mariah, please quickly, can you help us quickly check what the commissioner is saying concerning Abakiari? Because no, he we were said, asking I read that. that. I read the story. Hey, hey tell, tell us. us. People were asking him that mm. where is Abakiari? He said mm. that they talk via WhatsApp. Oh, but he has really? no idea where he is. That he, doesn't, he can't de determine the location of Abakiari in Lagos State via WhatsApp. Oh, wow. There's conspiracy theory outside there, and we must fail to acknowledge the fact that people are saying that um, Ab Abakiari is not in Nigeria. In the country. He's actually in the UK mm -hmm. at a particular hospital receiving treatment there. So because we have that out, the least we would have is to dispel the rumor. When people were saying the president is not in the country or is sick, what they did was to show us a video and him addressing us. So can we so see, can we see the commissioner for health in Lagos with Abakiari with the picture outside and then so we dispel the all the rumors. The commissioner said he's not, he doesn't know his whereabouts. Yeah. And so, I, don't, so I don't think we should actually bring up rumors here. I really yeah. do it's think. Not, it's oh. not it's a rumor. rumor. Well, and that's why we're asking, should, they should know, dispel it. Yeah, they should prove. So when you don't see anything, rumors will spread. We're just asking questions. He himself used his own mouth to say that he has come to Lagos. Yeah. Abakiari himself, we read it in the papers on Monday, sure. that he's been in Lagos Pictorial on evidence. Pictorial Make evidence. Sure. Mm. Nigerians are just so cynical. <laughs> Moving on to Vanguard. <laughs> Lockdown, Lagos, Abuja's residents cry for palliatives. Why were suspending electricity um, tariff hike? We mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Army approves new post posting of officers. Angry man wails, let my wife die at home than be abandoned here. Why we deny 35 Americans entry into Calabasas Cross River government. Lockdown necessary sacrifice for all, says OPS. This man that was saying that let my wife die, who, who has that story? We didn't read it. We didn't read it though. Oh, it was, all, it was on social media. Yes. yes. So he actually took uh, the wife who was you know, suspected Shane, to have contacted COVID-19, yes, to Yaba. That's where they are supposed to have the isolation center. So put her there, but then said for two days, nobody attended to them. But then I think one of the health officers spoke up and said that when you come to an isolation center, it's actually very different from a normal mm. ward. So you're not going to get people that will be talking to you. They are going to leave you alone for whatever, however she explained it, saying that over time the lady will adjust to what is happening. Okay, in the I'll try to read word. that article. Yeah. And, and, because that was exactly just the story then. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, video. That's the video. Maybe I saw a video online, so I, I wasn't sure it was the same. Uh, I think they should look into the case. Let's be sure. Anyways, moving on, because the other, the, the lady that came out um, that was um, discharged did mm. mention that she was she was abandoned at the mm. initial point when she got to that place. Yes. Nobody spoke for two at least two hours. Mm. So there is some truth to this. So we this need to understand what days. exactly is the procedure. Mm. Once somebody suspects they have some symptoms. What, 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 what are the steps up to the point where they get to bed? So we need to get that information from yes, someone in there. So we need Moving on to Daily Sun, FG blows hot over stay at home order violation. COVID 19 reps donate two months' salary. Wow, they really want this thing to be on. Mm, in fact, yeah. every day we're hearing this thing back to back on the front page. <laughs> two months' salary is a You people <laughs> should <laughs> take the story. Uh, let me find another story we're not taking. Contractor abandons a new Google Airport project site. Quara shuts borders, fumigates markets, stops house-to-house -house distribution of palliatives, and U.S. explains the evacuation of nationals from Nigeria. Okay, so for the Enugu story, I have that story. Um, they've actually stopped work at the Enugu airport, mm -hmm. and as a result of COVID-19, um, stay-at-home lockdown. However, some people ha are saying that now that everybody's home, this might be a good time to complete road projects, mm -hmm. Airport yes. projects, all yes. the infrastructural projects. Yes. Now, because you have less traffic, most mm. of the engineers so it might are be, known. Might be a good time, but non-Nigerians. Yeah. Non so Sometimes that might be a problem. 
Some Sorry? The, the, some of the engineers are non-Nigerians. Actually, the top-ranking ones are usually non-Nigerians. The contracts the are given now. to other people. So because they might not be Nigerians, mm -hmm. the, the issue will now be that they will not be around and right. they can't be working. But I want to take the U.S. story. So yeah. the U.S. government evacuated citizens of America from Nigeria yesterday, saying that they know that Nigeria is doing all they can to keep people safe, but their responsibility are to Americans anywhere in the world, and, they are, and they've called on anyone that wants to go back home to go back home, that because the isolation going on here means that Nigeria, um, American citizens would rather spend that time with families in their own country than being here. So that's just basically what, they, what happened. Okay. Of reps quickly. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, so the, a representative have said uh, yesterday that um, they are going to be donating that the 360 members are going to be donating their two month salary, which mm. is March and April, to the fight against COVID 19. Okay. And they're saying, aside from that salary, they're also giving out small, small helps to individuals to help them cushion the effect of this. And they're sending this money directly to the National Relief Fund account, saying they're doing all in their power to ensure that they fight against this COVID 19. I am happy about this, and I think they should be applauded. But then uh, we are seeing bags of rice with the names of the honorable members who are sending it is it this is this more like a campaign that they are beginning to campaign because you can actually send out these things without you know having your name and your picture pasted on no, the but, backs but of rice and all of that it helps to know who is coming from because if you don't, don't put your name necessary. there somebody will say that i'm the one giving you so imagine if i am the house of representative um I'm, i want to distribute rice to my constituents and i give it to the local government chairman mm. and the chairman now says i'm giving you rice the glory does not come to me why would the chairman it, say that well that's the way life is so let's just confirm the good thing is they are doing something yes I'm happy and we that. and as many as as much as possible let's trickle it down to those that All need right. it we have to go on a break now that's all we can take. When we come back, everybody is hearing about the use of chloroquine. Since, since Trump made this announcement, Nigerians have been going up and down buying chloroquine. Mm -hmm. We're hearing of different versions of various um, herbs you can use to help cure COVID-19. But when we come back, we'll be discussing with the DG of NAFDAQ to understand exactly what's being done concerning chloroquine. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So we have with us the Director General of National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, Mrs. Mujisola Adeyeye, to clarify um, this recent um, talk on the clinical trials for chloroquine. Good morning, madam. Are you there? Yes, I'm I'm here. Good morning. Yeah, How good are to, you? very good. Good to have you on the show. So we read very recently that you have approved clinical trials for the um, COVID, uh, chloroquine and you've instructed pharmaceuticals to begin to produce this drug. Could you please confirm this and why? Well, I did, I, I did not, or NAPDAC did not approve any clinical trial yet. Okay. What I said was that uh, chloroquine has been used in other clients as clinical trial treatment drug. Uh, it has been used in China where this uh, pandemic started in clinical trials and that trial involved uh, 100 patients and uh, the report in that literature stated that chloroquine was superior to the control. Hmm. Uh, chloroquine has also been used as clinical trial treatment drug in the United States, University of Minnesota, uh, and they found it effective. The same thing in China. So what I said was that chloroquine from all the literature that I read, chloroquine can be used for clinical trial treatment. Okay. Please. When we hear clinical trials, we, we, we need some kind of clarity. So yes. we're, 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 are you saying that within the hospital um, setting, they can test chloroquine used for those who have been, um, who have been uh, certified to have the virus? Or are you saying that pharmaceutical companies can begin to begin tests to see indeed if they can start producing um, chloroquine for mass um, consu consumption. Yeah, that's a very good uh, 
question and the clarity is what I want to explain or to, to, to present. You can do clinical trial without the patient being treated, in which case you do the test on healthy subjects or healthy individuals. That is a method or one of the clinical trial methods. Uh, the second one is when you are using the drug to treat patients, like this emergency situation. Uh, that is what hospitals, university settings, uh, clinical uh, departments or teaching hospitals, that is what they can do. In which case, patients that have been uh, confirmed to be positive can be given the drug and then they keep monitoring the clinical indices, uh, whatever the clinical indices may be, observation, so that they will map out uh, the effect of chloroquine on the type of clinical outcome that they are trying to observe. Right, okay. And so that <clears throat> is, uh, Lagos State is preparing to do that. And NAVDAC is right in the middle of clinical trial right. because we have the mandate to ensure that whichever drug will be given to any subject or patient, that that drug is safe, that the clinical protocol is right, is of international standards, right. and that the clinical site is such that we support and protect the subject that is being used. Okay, all right. So those are our functions, but we also do uh, the approval with uh, the National Research Ethics Committee, okay. NREC. So right. the two bodies uh, do the approval together. All right, all right, ma. So um, what, what is NAFDAQ doing to protect citizens? Because immediately they heard uh, uh, America okay, yes. announce chloroquine. A lot of people rushed into the marketplaces to buy and stock up chloroquine in their houses. So what are you doing in, in terms of awareness? How are you reaching out to them that this is not the, the step they are supposed to take to protect themselves? That if they have any symptoms, they should go to the hospital and not stockpile chloroquine because the price actually skyrocketed. Yes, actually I gave a press briefing on the 20th of March where I stated this clearly. I also went on channels on the 21st of March where I repeated what I had already said the previous day. Uh, if anybody doesn't have any cause to have been exposed to COVID, there is no need even thinking of chloroquine. Hmm. But if somebody has been exposed or came in contact with somebody that has been exposed, then that person should seek advice from the doctor because it's the medical advice that will lead to whether that person will need to do X, Y, Z, meaning whether that person needs to go and see uh, a specialist or go to the, epi to, to the center, rather, to be tested. And the doctor will also advise that person to call NCDC. Right. NCDC is the body uh, that is in charge of uh, epidemics and pandemics. Okay, all right. Uh, but, oh, sorry. So I wanted to ask a question, Ma. Um, when, whenever we watch, whenever we're watching the news, and the, especially the US news, we would confirm that they would say hydroxyl chloroquine. And based on what we read on the pack we have here is chloroquine phosphate. Obviously, that means there's a difference between both of them. And the one they carry out on the test that we hear is that it's the hydroxyl one. So can you please clarify for us, if the chloroquine people buy from the stores is effective or should be used at all, or should people just wait for when you have approved, not that has approved the hydroxyl chloroquine mm -hmm. for treatment? Actually, both are very effective from okay. literature against COVID virus. Mm -hmm whether it is chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. The difference is that hydroxychloroquine is more soluble, meaning it goes quickly you know, uh, into the cell, and it doesn't have uh, as many side effects as chloroquine. But most people my age, or maybe another generation younger than mine, were brought up on chloroquine. Right. And if we all survived, 
It means even the side effects that uh, are being compared may not be that much for chloroquine, you know. Okay. Uh, but hydroxychloroquine is a little safer. Right. But in terms of approval, we've already approved chloroquine many, many years ago right. before it was discontinued. Okay. Madam, I have to ask you about, uh, recently we got an article, a press release from the RNE of IFE concerning herbal remedies that can be used as a cure for this virus. And aside from the RNE, there's been so many um, local herbalists that have actually come forward to say there are local um, things we can use, herbs we can use. Um, as a professor in this regard, do you think it might be a good idea to begin to consider some of these um, remedies? Options. Yes, uh, it is. It is time for us to start considering the products for translation into, or to uh, the medicines rather, to for translation into commercial products. But before that is done, you need scientific evidence. NAVDAC has registered hundreds of herbal medicine and we when we do the registration and we found the evidence we do testing we do anti, we do microbial content testing we do toxicity testing and if those two are okay we give a limited registration uh, what you will see L at the end of NAVDAC number which means we are giving you a limited registration period of two years uh, you should be doing more to show us that this actually works very well. And showing more is doing clinical trials. Mm. And you have to do the clinical trials according to international standards, right. mm -hmm. meaning you design your experiments, you know your subjects. Mm -hmm. All we those things we results. can guide. NAVDA can guide right. whoever is interested in translating their products to commercial. Okay. Uh, because it has to be sub supported by evidence, mm. by scientific evidence. Mm. Because sometimes we think that because something is natural, it doesn't have side effects. Uh, side effects. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, That's let's go not true. Let's go on a quick break, madam. We'll be with you in a, sh uh, in a moment. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. To your view. Thanks for staying with us. I think we still have the DG. Madam, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Thank let, you. let me just ask you the final question. Um, people, have, as, as Obia Julie said earlier, people have stockpiled on these drugs, chloroquine. Now, what general, what general advice would you have for Nigerians right now? Because would you suggest that we totally not take chloroquine at all, or we should at least buy and keep, that's one. And number two, for those who are making fake chloroquine, produ producing right now fake um, chloroquine tablets out there, how do we identify which one is fake and which one is not fake? Okay, in terms of stockpiling, nobody should stockpile chloroquine. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, because uh, hydroxychloroquine, for example, is used for other ailments, like uh, lupus. And I have been called, uh, somebody with lupus called me and said he, she couldn't find the medicine uh, to buy. Uh, so those who need hydroxychloroquine will not be getting that now for other ailments. So that is why we should not stock uh, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. Uh, when somebody is not feeling well, uh, the government is making arrangements to ensure that if that person has COVID, that person will get treated. The state governments are making plans now for that. So there is no need talking up uh, chloroquine. Okay. And then your second question, please repeat your second question. So how do we identify the fake and non-fake um, that is, Yes, that is, part, that is what our, we do. For example, we went on the market about two weeks ago, uh, to look for sanitizers, just in case they are, they are fake, fake sanitizers. Mm -hmm. And of the seven that we found, six were fake. Mm. 
So that is what we do. We do post marketing surveillance. And we've already put it on our alert uh, web page on navdac.gov.ng for people to watch out for fake sanitizers. For wow. the drug, for the chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, we're going to be doing post marketing surveillance. Mm. Going around and see which chloroquine so, so, is there, so and then these, we bring it back to the these lab. These fake said. sanitizers, what did you do about them? What, I mean, did, have you, you know posted the, brand? the brands on your website? Mm. Can we go there to check? That's what I just said. That if you go to navdac.gov.ng, right. you will see uh, a, a, a link on the right side alert okay. and recall. Okay. If okay. you click that link, it will bring you to a page, okay. and you will see the types of uh, sanitizers that we found that are fake or that don't have not that number, oh, meaning they, don't, they didn't come through us. Hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Madam, for joining us this morning. We appreciate your inputs this morning. We've been speaking Thank with you. the Director General of Thank National you. Agency for Food and Drug Administration, NAFDAC, Mrs. Mujisola Adeyeye. Okay, moving, going on now to how to keep our children occupied. We'll be discussing e-learning options for students when we come back. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So across the world, over nearly 300 million children are out of school because of coronavirus. Most parents are trying to figure out how to support their children's academic work whilst staying at home. Joining us on the show a bit later is uh, an educational psychologist, uh, Mrs. Ayokweju Ayinjidaraka. We'll come to her in a moment, but first I'd like to find out from you guys how you manage at home. Um, we've been locked down a couple of days now. In fact, in Lagos State, since last week, yeah. the kids have been home mm -hmm. going on two weeks now. <coughs> How have you been managing um, learnings for them whilst at home? It's plenty of work. Okay, so really, it's a whole lot of work. Right. Um, and when I, when I say a whole lot of work, I mean, like, I, th thankfully, about a month ago, after we did midterm assessment and I realized that, oh, I needed to sit on my kids doing uh, mathematics, I went to Yaba and I bought um, bond math, bond English, bond verbal, I bought quantitative, lancer quantitative verbal. So I got like the, a, a second copy mm. of most of the textbooks they use in the school okay. and I got it at home. <laughs> Thankfully those have been very useful now. So I just say go and do exercise 2A, go and do exercise 2B. So I've been doing that since last week and I did not mark. Uh -huh. So is, yesterday was now mommy's work. <laughs> Mommy, we are not working. They have, been do, that they have been doing the work and I'm not marking oh, it to know what they've gotten. So I now said yesterday and I started marking each other. I'm like, oh God, these teachers are trying because yeah, it's, just, it's easy to give you the work to do, but right. I need to be sure of the answers and right. not all the questions. Right. So it was, it, it was interesting in them, but then I just felt like also they, they do a lot, they watch cartoons and then I just send them to the room to go and read. They should get more creative because mm. the easiest thing for me to do is to put them in front of a TV once yeah. they're in front of the screen. They won't yeah. disturb me. My kids actually yeah. watch. That's the easiest thing to do. Let me come to you, BC. What are you doing to yeah, keep your so, kids engaged? Okay, so first of all, their father got them a game, which <laughs> all of them are. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yikes. And they are excited about it. So when I'm home, because sometimes I'm not home, I have to come to work. But when I'm home, I plan their time for them. Uh, so you have to finish this before you do this, before you do that. So that we have a bit of organization. Not once you wake up, you are. No, it won't happen. But aside from that, uh, my daughter's school opened up an online platform mm. where you can go in, get your work, do it and submit it. But we have a lot of problems accessing those works. Some are not opening, it has to do with, and sometimes the data is not, is not uh, functioning properly, it's low and all of that. So it's giving us serious, there are some tasks now that she's not even able to do. And when you get online into that platform, sometimes when you don't meet up with the task, it, it, expires. it, it expires and you can't mm. get. So I had to talk to her, I said, you can't give my yeah. daughter, if she was in school, you tell her mm. her work has expired. Mm. You have to find a way to, so it's a lot of problem. Yeah. Most, most, most schools have so done that online, because I know my our schools, I logged in and I, uh, 
uh, but we've not started actually engaging mm -hmm. the kids, okay. but we're all logged in right now, and many schools are in, um, using that online platform. I also, for me, I try to use this opportunity to teach them Yoruba. So mm, we good. started practicing Yoruba lessons. Today we are doing proverbs, you know. Ah. So we're going to learn about two or three proverbs, Yoruba proverbs. So I, I don't want to do schoolwork, mm, honestly. That's I'm not just interested. too much headache. Mm. Um, so once the portal is open, I'll just hang in, the, stay in front of the laptop and do your thing. But my own time is learn the basic alphabets, know how to pronounce, because I'm very good with tone marks, so the Yoruba mm. tone marks. Okay. So I want to let them understand the tone, um, uh, Abi, Baby. I a, B, oh, a, B, I'm very C. good with it though, don't worry, I can't, I, just can't, I can't just get it right now. But the point is that I want them to begin to learn Yoruba, so I'm using this time to teach them Yoruba the best I can. But let's uh, engage our guest, she's a psychologist. Oh, I'm just told she's been disconnected. Yeah, so hopefully we can get her back on online. Another yeah. thing I noticed when I was exercising yesterday was that a lot of parents were taking morning yes. walks with their children. Yes. My yeah. husband and I, while working yesterday, now told me that, ah, do, what, do my children need exercise? Your children that are very skinny. My, I, my kids are like very skinny and they eat a lot. So I'm wondering if I don't carry this also to exercise, what will be left on their body? They were still yeah. trying to fatten them up. But it was fun to see those kids. Yeah. Um, we take our kids family. out at night. Yeah. All of them. We carry them along with us. And we, 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 act, we walk late in the night from like 8 p.m. Yeah. So we, do, we go up the hill, run down the hill. They actually, yeah. I stay at one end, he stays at the other end. Oh, and they are cool. running back and forth. And they love And then they'll go and sleep. I'll look into ah, it. Ah, Works. As they They'll enter just AC get to like this, before you get to the house, off. they're off. You just <laughs> yeah, carry but, them. Yeah. So uh, there, there was a friend who, I think she's been on the show sometime, where she was talking about uh, book clubs. So she put up a book club for children, online book club, which I just registered yesterday. Ah. And we're talking about it. She said a lot of children will get into the platform every Saturday. Mm. They'll have access to numerous books they can read. So I'm looking forward to this Saturday. You know, Let's I'm not try it out and see how... And I'll ask you about that because... Yeah. I am very uh, weary, or I'm, I mean, I'm careful about exposing the children to too much knowledge. No, no time much. on the on, okay, on, okay, on, okay, on, okay, on the too much screen usage. Yes. I really have that problem. So I know they're going to be on their online portal. Yeah. They're they use it for their phone, for their what they call it, the games they play, and yeah. then they yeah. now go to reading. So for me, it's a bit much. I just feel like the kids be exposed to that I much. I agree with you. Screen time. I agree with you. Mm. Okay, so for me, I don't give my children my phones. They right. see, they call this one my baby. Mommy right. will not let you touch her phone. And my daughter was asking me, when do I get a phone? When do I get internet? I said, till mm. you are out of secondary school. Right. Why? Because there are information that could easily come to you when I'm not there to monitor that you're not ready for. Mm -hmm. And she was like, ah, ah, yeah, I say yes, because if the internet is free and sometimes the internet is not aware that it's a child that's holding that gadget. There are applications so when, yeah, though. Yeah, there are applications that you just, it's just a small mistake mm. to just click it and then something that your child is I'd not like supposed to, to see pops I'd, up. I'd like to open the phone lines to hear from parents this, this morning uh, whilst we're trying to get our uh, psychologists to speak to us in a moment. Yes, there are protective about. applications that parents can put on their, on, the, on their children's laptops that will prevent them from accessing a few types of websites. And, and so any, you flag, you flag down words that are inappropriate for your child. So I think even parents need to be very aware and abreast of all the technology that can be used to protect their children. I also think that one of the things that we should allow children to do is play. Just the, the play of notes that you are playing on a game. Manual you play. are imaginational play. Mm -hmm. How? Acting. So my kids do role play. They will take one of their stuffed toys. They do, They say they want to do a sock, um, sock puppet show. So they put on the sock into their hand and they are naming these socks. It's one. Yeah. This is another one. Yeah. And they, they now want to just. Do, I said, don't freestyle for me. Go and create a script for your mm. play. But just uh, let them. You see what they can come up with independently. Because I didn't teach them to do that. But they just said they, they they thought about it and wanted to do. Another friend they were doing hide and seek. Mm. Then you know all. You just let yeah. them, you know. Okay, let's do ten cents. Let's played. do this stuff they put on the floor. You know you. You, you draw um, boxes, boxes yeah. and, and then they across. jump into it. You know, let's just go a bit old okay, school. I'm mm. told that we have our psychologist. Good morning. Are you there? We have Mrs. Ayokweju in Jideka. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mariah. Good morning. Morning. I hope you've been listening to us because we've been saying so much of what we're doing in our houses. But since you're the professional, could you tell yes, us? Yes, I love the fact that you're teaching your children your way to go. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. So what are other options are out there for parents to use during this period? Okay, there are a number of free um, websites, number of free educational resources. Um, number one thing is um, government is... Um, they're airing a number of classes, 
for SS3 and then for younger children as well. So that's available on radio, it's available on TV. But for parents who want to go online, uh, the number of um, resources, for instance, we have Audible. Audible is a website that has um, a number of books, a lot of books actually, that children can read free of charge. Also, you have Khan Academy. Then if you go on the UNESCO website, UNESCO Mm. Oh, there goes Skype. Gives you a list of websites you can take. Math websites must work with their children. It's not time to just abandon these children online. The internet is a very dangerous place, and parents must get involved. Mm. Is it bad to get your kids watching movies and playing games? Because I feel guilty sometimes when I hand them over to maybe Netflix and say, just go and watch a movie. Um, I, is, it, is it good to also add some play to this or should we find a way to monitor how much play they're getting at this period? Well, you should actually have a schedule. Mm -hmm. Have a schedule. Children need to play. And even the learning time needs to be fun. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about them studying, make it fun, get involved. For instance, if they're reading anything, read along with them, and you can convert it to stories. So there's nothing wrong with playing. It's important to have a schedule. And remember that life is not only about academic knowledge. Thank you. What are you doing with these children concerning morals, concerning behavior? Mm. And I believe this is the perfect time to actually uh, rebuild values. This is time to have those kind of conversations with them. This is time to make sure that your children can follow a schedule, plan and then provide a schedule. Interestingly, I wrote an article next week and I had attached to it a schedule from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So there should be time for house chores. How are children going to learn to, number one, groom themselves, uh, take care of the environment and all those things. So there's nothing wrong in having fun. <laughs> Sit with them and watch the the right. movie and after it you can have a discussion so there's nothing wrong with okay. that all right ma. so i had a problem with the workload that my kids were bringing home my younger kids at uh before this covid 19 issue and i realized that by the time the kids get home there is no time for them to play they just eat their food in a hurry, do the homework, and it's bedtime. So I had a serious problem. I went to the school to complain, and they said, we are following the curriculum. We need to meet up with all of this. So when this happened and my kids are home, I'm not interested in opening any school work. I am just focusing on trying to, you know, help them understand things better, do the house chores, play the games, play with them. That's what I'm interested in. But also with the internet, because some <laughs> students who are supposed to do exams, like my elder daughter, who was supposed to have written her... Um, entrance examination couldn't and so she has to be up to date with work but the internet system I don't think we've gotten there yet we are having a lot of parents are having issues logging in you know following through some parents are not even able to use the system to upload the work that has been done so we haven't gotten there yet what can be done about it before we just launch into everybody's reading online okay so let me let me put it in two ways Number one, traffic on the internet is very heavy at this point. Mm -hmm. And that, as we all know, uh, the bandwidth, the speed is not there yet, as you rightly said. But there are times when it's not that, um, it's not that heavy. That's one side. The other side is it's time for children to actually learn their real environment. Uh, if, if children need to go through the trouble of, of waiting to log in, waiting to do all that, what you're teaching them is grit and resilience. Because uh, learning on the internet actually takes a lot of patience. Yeah. Right. That's one. Right. Then the other thing is, find out from the school, is this something they can download? If you can download and you can work offline, it makes life easier. Okay. So right. it's time for us to remember that even the uh, schools, this is new, we're all chatting, we're all working on, on chatted courses. It's very important for us. Right. Whoops. There goes Skype again. Oh. Um, we're also trying to get her connection. Let, uh, I'm told that oh, Chiki... Oh, let me just okay. send it to the email. Hello, are you still there? Yes, I'm, I can okay. hear you. Okay, just sorry about that. We're having some issues with uh, Skype. But um, there's a caller from Ilukeju or Ikeja. Chiki, are you there? You have a question yeah. for our guest. Go ahead, please. 
the question. Go ahead, Chike, go ahead. Okay, so it's not, it's, um, I wanted to contribute my own part on, uh, because I'm, I'm also a teacher, so and I know that we started doing this um, e-learning where we send our questions on the platform. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but also, I got a video this morning that caught my attention. The video was talking about um, us being careful with the type of face mask and hand um, gloves you are buying, that most of these things come from China, and that most of them are already infected with the COVID-19. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> Lord, Chike. Chike, thank you very much. You know, we said yesterday that we're going to try to get a segment on your view very soon, like a fact-check segment, to let you know what is, what is truth and what is false. false. Um, so lots of things are on the internet, trust me. Everybody's passing all sorts of information. Please only go by what you hear from credible news sources and don't go by all these words. But we'll help you fact check and, uh, fact check and then get back to you. Back to our psychologist. Um, Tokwe had a question. Go ahead. I wanted to ask you a question because when your view is being watched by more than the elites, and the fact is Nigeria has a lot of poor people. A lot of our children are not even in school at all before. Many parents don't even have smartphones to give their children. Yeah. So we're talking to people beyond the elites that can say, oh, take Netflix, oh, take Water. a laptop, oh, take a tablet. Mm -hmm. Some people don't even have lights. There's no power. So how can parents watching now that have the opportunity to watch now engage their children productively without all this e-learning platform and gadgets to keep them busy? What can we do? First thing is to spend time with those children. I know that, um, as I said earlier on, the Lagos State Government is working closely with the Ministry of Education, and they have a lot of programs that they're airing on radio. And with radio, you have all those small transistor radios. All they need are batteries. Mm -hmm. So again, it's about parents prioritizing learning. Mm -hmm. So a mama or lodger who is home with her children can talk about math. She doesn't even have to say it in English. She can do Ishiro with her children. Mm. She can show her children money and then they, they change money and all that. She can also demonstrate certain things in Yoruba to her children. It's time to even let the children learn. Because one of the major things, uh, uh, major challenges we have, children who come to school, uh, some of them are not even able to speak English. But mm. unfortunately, Okay, we're still having with the issue with the connection, but I think. Um, Even they have vocabulary. Am I back on? Yes, you're back on. You can conclude. Go ahead. Okay, so the first thing is to commit to spending time with these children. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. We appreciate your inputs uh, very much this early morning. Okay, we've been speaking with the educational psychologist. Mrs. Ayokweju Njideaka. We're going to go on a break now. When we come back, we'll discuss how to handle children with special needs during this period. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So we all know that special attention is being given to children across board, even with those with special needs. But with the ongoing pandemic, parents with various kinds of children are confused on how to handle them. So we talked earlier about various learning options. We'll be discussing how to also handle this, the children that need special attention. Joining us on the show is a parenting expert, Tonye Falao Ekeze. Welcome to the show. Hello. Yeah, good to have you on. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Okay, so, I, I mean, every single day for someone like me, I complain because the kids are constantly coming to me saying, Mommy, Michael did this. Mommy, Michelle did this. Mom, they're constantly going on and on, getting through my skin. And I'm like, keep quiet. <laughs> so I'm thinking, parents that have special kids, kids that have special needs, what are they going through right now? Because some of them always handed the kids over to schools to handle these children. But now they're having to face all these tantrums, hours. 24 hours. What advice can you give to them at this, yeah. at this point? Well, I think that, um, that I think everybody, first of all, when you have them in this intense situation is to keep calm. Get to know your children. Keep calm and don't panic. That's the first thing, because we can get overwhelmed 
because everything's changed. Um, like someone like me, I work from home. So now my schedule is completely different. And I made sure to spend the first week at home just transitioning them. So yes, the school has been great in sending a schedule for both my uh, children. My son is neurotypical. My daughter is the one with special needs. And um, they were very good in communicating what the curriculum is till the end of term, which is Friday. So I've communicated to my children that we may be at home, but we are still in school. So school rules apply. Now for my daughter with special needs, uh, she struggles with speech and language and communication, but she has really been coming along. But she can't read, she's learning to write. So how do you communicate for a child to understand the process of what is going on? So we have incorporated over some time things like Makaton Sign, which is a baby sign language, um, which is fantastic when children are learning to communicate, but also um, when, um, you know, they're going through that phase of tantruming, whether special needs or non special needs, all children go through that tantrum phase. And usually the reason for that is because Right. We need to wait. Yeah. Okay, oh, so the inability. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. Okay, well, this is hanging. Okay, so get their needs across. They're no longer a baby. Okay, or uh, that. Tony, Tony, it's hanging. We might have to call you so we had do an audio. Hello. Can you? Okay, yeah. Are you there now? Okay, I'm. I'm hearing. Okay, now. so can yes, finish I'm up the last now. part you said, please. Repeat the last part you said. Mm -hmm. Um. So. What I was saying is in terms of that key is key during the time when they're home here is communicate. Okay. Okay, we, we have a different, we can't hear you right now, Tony. But um, she's, so you're it, going to talk I, about something. Yes, um, it's challenging enough dealing with neurotypical children. Neurotypical children are children that have no um, special, needs. special needs. But uh, one of my um, child's, classmates is a special needs child is autistic and while he's in the class with them I, i'm so happy that my kids have the exposure to someone who's not the same way he's, he's looks like them mm -hmm. but sometimes he just he just hits the table for a long time and they have to like, tell him to calm down calm down and one of the things i was saying during the break was that parenting teaches us to be patient and if you're if you can't be patient you would beat up your children scream at them it requires a whole lot of patience to just listen to them and more patience for those that have special needs kid children because they need they, they, they cannot communicate with you on the same level mm. and so you need to become like them think mm. like them imagine that you are the one unable to effectively say what they want to say and then how you would feel so that you wouldn't be forcing it on them i, mm. I struggle with that with my one of my twin stammers and whatever is trying to get a word through when he's talking to my mom my mom tends to want to be like say it again say it again and I'm, i've read enough research online to realize that this boy knows what he wants to say mm. he's struggling to say through the stammering to say it yeah. so you as a parent just need to listen to him and wait till he stammers his way till the mm. end I, i'm mm. even more concerned about uh, other family members because mm. you know sometimes when a, a, a mother has a child that has special needs you you go through that process with the child because you are the first person to notice that he's not mm. talking when he's supposed to talk he's not working so by the time you are going to the therapist and all of that you're learning certain skills that you're using to help the child but then when you have other family members who are not equipped to help handle that child and you're all living together that's where mm. the problem is mm. so this is the time i believe that you have to start educating people around you like you yeah. talk to mommy now mm. to calm down and listen okay. that he's trying to say something okay i'm told that tony is back tony are you there i think phone is better via phone good morning are you there tony still having some connection issues um i was going to actually ask but back that right now that we're home, mm. a lot of families, a lot of mothers are looking at are looking at this opportunity of rebonding with their spouses. So yeah, well, they are also know. not they are not even seeing all this whining for them. Go and watch cartoon. Me, I want to fix my marriage. My, my marriage. I'm trying to have a be there to Daddy have a communication. That is home. Daddy, I don't go anywhere so again. I need to. I would like to speak to Tony on this, and I hope we can um, get a connection back because there are parents who are not really paying attention at this time. They're thinking, yeah. listen, I want to pay attention to Oga. 
mm. and let me hear everything he has to say mm. and let the children be watching cartoon mm. so that is also there aside mm. from the special needs issue so i would really like to hear her thoughts on how a parent can make up time mm. for i think that children be involved. yes that yeah. is that is uh daddies because they are the fathers of the children mm. and so we need to have more daddy involvement Ye yesterday you now i've been using my daddy my husband in the kitchen very well nowadays i'm like i've just <laughs> i've left him to the kitchen Using. and when i dozed off after eating correct bemu that i prepared he now came to ask me what would the children eat i said about you in the kitchen today now continue and when i woke up he actually started it out so for me it it helps for Husbands and our fathers should step in. Mm. They should step up. Mm. They should take responsibility of caring for the children because most of the time they are out working. But now we are all locking down here together, stay at home. We die. Yeah. Let's just be a bit more because the stress will be less on mothers if the fathers are stepping up and doing something with the kids. So what you're saying is that yes, we want to have time to bond. Mm. But whilst it's during that school time, yes. let's all bond. Let's let's yes. all participate yes. in the learning so that, that the kids help. feel. Yeah. Mm, that's I, I, that I also help. think uh, it's time. It, it's 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 good to have like a schedule. So the bonding time, that type of bonding that you're looking for, you can move it to the early hours of the morning, like mm -hmm. the early hours. Okay, I'm told that we have Tonya back. Tonya, are you there? Mm -hmm. Tonya, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh my God, we've been gisting without you. Oh, I've been trying to catch the gist. Oh, you guys are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. So before, before we got disconnected, yes, we understand mm -hmm. how to handle the issue of special needs. But we talked mm -hmm. earlier that parents who are also trying to use this time to bond with their spouses, mm. I think are having difficulties in finding that time to have the daughters sit down with the children, hear their thoughts, discuss, let's yes. tell stories. Please, I'm trying to fix a marriage. I'm trying to, you know, chat with my husband or wife, you know. So how do we make out that time for these children during this period? Well, I think as um, the psychologist had said earlier, is that a schedule is key. Right now, we are still in the school schedule, but as of next week, we will make a holiday schedule because you need to know what is happening at each time. Now, you don't have to be completely strict with it. It's a guideline. You don't want to be running like it's not a military school that these children are at or your husband or wife is at. Mm. But, for example, everybody needs to know what their role is within this time. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of fighting, a lot of resentment, a lot of argument all around from the parents and the children. And everybody needs to participate in all the chores of the house because... There's no cook, there's no cleaner, there's no nanny, there's no driver. Who is doing what? And the children should be involved with that as part of their daily schedule. So we actually have chores and gardening and cooking in their schedule, and they participate in all of that. On, on our page on um, Simone's Oasis, I put up the other day them cleaning, door handles, the stair railing, and would you believe it, they absolutely loved it. <laughs> and children actually like to walk. Don't be fooled. They might resist you initially, but after one or two minutes, they'll be so into it yes. and looking for something else to clean. Okay, special needs. Yes. So it's really so, important everybody is engaged, and nobody should be too proud to do the menial task. All right, all right. Okay. So uh, back to the special needs children. I mm -hmm. understand that um, some, for the mothers, I would want to speak mm -hmm. on their behalf. They may know or have certain skills that help their children go through the phases depending on yeah. the kind of special need. But then we have yeah. the other me family members who would live yeah. in the same house who do not have those skills. Now, how in these times that everybody's living together, how do we communicate those skills to those other family members who don't have the skills to handle the special needs children? Well, it's, it's quite difficult sometimes because you may not... Well, it's, it's quite difficult sometimes because you may not have been in the therapy sessions with your child. And it's important now to touch base with the professionals, including the school, that are involved with your child. You know what techniques they're using. Mm. You know, as a, as a main carer, kind of what's going on. But as you say, other family members may not. So get them involved. It's a group effort. It takes, you know, a village to raise a child, and it definitely takes a village to raise a special needs child. So some of those simpler tasks, five, ten minutes every day, assigned to another family member so that that child is not only dependent on you all the time. Right. Because you will get overwhelmed, you will get stressed, and that is what everybody will feel. So the, the idea that of the mentality within your household is all hands on deck. It doesn't matter how small the youngest one is, even if the child is a baby, you can have them involved. 
So everybody must pitch in, everybody must do their part, and okay. every must, everybody must do this together. It's a real important time for bonding. Right. And we, we start off the day, our school day, our, our home school day, with Jesus' time. We read scripture, we talk about the scripture, we say a prayer. You just sound like a perfect mom to me. Now what for you? I, I, I'm wow. not, so please, 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 God, I'm not. I'm not. It's, let me tell you, it makes me laugh so much that you're calling me a parenting expert. But I'm an expert on my children. Mm -hmm. And what I find is me talking about it has seemed to help other parents. Not because I think I'm any good at it. The funny thing is that I never thought I'd be a good parent. Right. And God surprises us. And I'm enjoying the experience. And okay, I'm let me get in a few questions for you. Go ahead. So, right. based on your last statement, a lot of parents, a lot of parents are struggling right now. They feel like they're not doing a good job. I'm not a good parent. Yes, My guilty. kids seem to not have good manners. They don't know. Yeah. Okay, so somebody is hearing you talk about having house chores, and they are wondering, eh? Mm -hmm. We've never done house chores mm -hmm. before. Like they don't know what to do. Can you yeah. sh um, share a word of yeah? Help. Can you give a basic ro routine? that it, a parent now listening and hearing from you can implement today to make them start getting in the flow of better parenting during this lockdown sure so today after we're done with this we're going to start our day with a morning work period and um for my younger child with special needs we're working on you know um her hand skills so we're doing threading spooning pouring ba really basic things identification of rice beans uh, Gary, things that you have at home that are really easy for you to work with with your child in, and that will help them develop. So simple, so simple. For my older child, we're going to do math and creative writing this morning. But in the afternoon, my sister is going to take them to do art class here. So she's going to host the art class for them in the afternoon. After that, they're doing the cooking. They're going to cook combi stew this afternoon, the two of them. They'll wear their aprons, cut the onions, do everything. But me, I want to come to your house, then. <laughs> 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 so I literally, it's it getting was... them involved. Yes, you have the curriculum stuff, but let's, let's also be honest with ourselves. We need our, child, our children to learn practical skills, and we have practical skills, so you just transfer those skills to your children right. in a way they can understand. And cool. nobody knows what they're doing in parenting, so okay. please don't feel like... You're a rubbish parent, you're not. Okay. Nobody no, knows what they're doing. Nobody all knows what they're doing. They're doing a lot. <laughs> and a lot of parents listening to you this morning will feel like, ah, whoa, I've really failed. I've not done anything. <laughs> no, uh, you have not yes. failed. That's, that's, that's but it's okay, though. It's okay. We're learning from you now. It. Yeah, so yeah. the thing I hear now is uh, parents need to pay a lot of attention and dedicate a lot of time with their children. But you yeah. know the situation of things in Nigeria where, yeah. aside from the fact that we are sitting at home, some people are still sitting at home and brooding about the money they don't have in their pockets. Mm. They are not like mentally you. in yeah. a place to yeah. have time for the children. Once you come close to them, they are shouting, leave me alone, there's no food yeah. and all of that. How yeah. does a parent who doesn't know how to survive tomorrow get into yeah. the space where they can, you know, work with the children, relate with the children? Mm. You know, how, 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 how? Just explain, please. please. This, this is a problem even without the COVID-19 situation. Right. Right. This is an issue because um, to access a lot of the help that special needs children need, um, it takes money. Yeah. But a child that is, a parent that is an advocate for their child is always an advocate for their child regardless of the circumstances. So I always say take even five, ten minutes with your child every day in a consistent time and do what you can with them in that time. If that is the only time you have, it's enough. Because that is quality time, that is bonding time, that is love time, and they will cherish that, those minutes, however little, with you. And as long as you keep that regular, they will be the ones reminding you, Mommy, Daddy, it's our time, oh. Right. Let's start. Thank you so, so much. So just start with what you can do. Right. right. And then go from there. Do not try and compare yourself to anybody else. <laughs> Everybody's situation is different. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Tonya, for joining us this morning. You're very really welcome. Appreciate it. We've been speaking with the parenting expert, Tonya Fallo Ezekiel. She's actually the founder of T Off Media. It's been a pleasure having her on the show. So we have to round up, but what have you learned, Tokwe, ah, so okay. far? Um, 
I used to do it before mm. and <clears throat> she reminded me. So we used to have story time every night before and I think that most of this year we haven't been consistent with it. So I'm going to go back into having bedtime stories with them as our one-on-one -on -one time. Also is to divide house chores. My mom has been very helpful. My mom makes sure that they lay the bed by themselves and I, I saw the bed laid yesterday and I was like, Mommy, Whoa. did you help them? <laughs> Say no. Said, no. They laid it by themselves. And I'm right. so my children can lay the mm. bed like this right. and I've been struggling. So Fantastic. because of that insistence, she's been really helpful. Yeah. So we'll now make it structured. Okay. So that's what we're, I'm going to well, do. Auntie, what have you learned? I've just learned that parenting is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> and before you decide to marry and have children, Ask yourself, am I ready to go through this? <laughs> because the truth is, you know, it's easy to just have, pop up the children and just make sure you have, you give them everything they want, give them the games, give them this, and then you move away. Mm. But deliberate parenting takes you to be disciplined oh, as a human being. Because yeah. sometimes I say, I want to do something for myself. Mm. And I don't remember. Mm. Now I have children that I have you to have remember to, to do. for them. Ah, it's a lot That's of work. I have to round up, but um, I've learned the chores. We're going to start fact. I'm going home right now, straight to their room. <laughs> <laughs> Sweep and mop and arrange this wardrobe. <laughs> so thank you very much, Tonya. I think thank we learned quite a bit. That's all we can take in a bit to protect ourselves from coronavirus scourge. Please remember the basic rules again: hygiene rules, wash your hands frequently, maintain social distances even within your house, we sit there and avoid touching eyes, nose, mouth, and clean the doorknobs. Remember, mm -hmm. continually clean the doorknobs and the railings yeah. while going to the staircase. If you have a fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, please seek medical care early. Have a fabulous day. Tomorrow is Thursday. We'll be just in about life, family, marriage, bonding, and possibly the other room. You know, mm -hmm. these days, it's been very, very active. Man. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day. <laughs>